All right, let's talk about high blood pressure a minute because that is an important issue. Well, let's lap that with low blood pressure. When we take someone's blood pressure, actually, what are we looking at? Are we just looking at the blood pressure? Absolutely not. And you notice in a blood pressure, you have two numbers. You have the systolic on top and the diastolic on the bottom. If you remember and you go into your body, you're going to find two kidneys. The skin, of course, is the third kidney. But you've got two kidneys. And on top of those kidneys are the adrenal glands. Now, the adrenal glands, as you guys know, are everything to us, and especially to the astral or emotional bodies. So when you see anxieties, you see shortness of breath, asthma, any chain of the COPDs, uh, that's a chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases, uh, not to use the word diseases, but when you see a lot of neurological problems to the lungs because uh, asthma on is neurological, so when you take a look at these, you look at heart arrhythmias, um, uh, uh, paralysis in a lot of ways, uh, you, you can see the autonomic nervous system involved. And we've talked about this before, that the parasympathetic part of the autonomic, the autonomic nervous system is the, what I call the second brain. To me, that brain is located in the solar plexus and the stomach area. So when you get hit there, you know, you notice you lose your breath. When you have stomach problems, you feel heart problems, breathing problems, because this is the core of the autonomic. The autonomic has two sides, parasympathetic, which reaches here in the cerebellum, and then the sympathetic, which reaches to the adrenal glands. Uh, the adrenal glands produces neural transmitters that turns on this nervous system. And it's geared to emotions, fight or flight, that's epinephrine, norepinephrine, those are your adrenalines. Then you have dopamines and acetylcholine. These are neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters either turn things on or turn things off. With dopamine and acetylcholine, you're into elimination as adrenaline, as epinephrine and norepinephrine are for activity and muscles. They shut down certain activities so energy isn't lost that way. When you need energy to the muscles to fight to protect yourself or to whatever, all energy has to be focused and that's what these neurotransmitters do. So they shut down some and increase others. And that's where stress comes in, in stress factors, in having a lot of symptoms because stress shuts down the dopamine acetylcholine and increases the epinephrine and norepinephrine because you're stressed, your energy, you're, and that sort of thing is why we lose elimination over time. And that's why you start to see a lot of symptoms under stress because, again, we're, we're increasing activity, but we're shutting down elimination. And... As you all are learning about the gigantic sewer system of the human body called the lymphatic system, when you shut down the kidneys, you're effectively shutting down that system. And it's okay at times because that's, you're not always going to be eliminating. And activity will help keep things moving. The whole thing comes into filtration of this sewer system through the kidneys. There has to be a movement. It is a fluid. Thing. No fluid can just sit there. Nothing can just sit and be static in creation. Because if you look at a lake that becomes stagnant, what happens? You can go uh, clean the top off of it and sell it as blue-green algae, palm scum. And a lot of people eat palm scum just uh, for the health of it. I suppose, uh, but palm scum, because we're in a, and people take palm scum and they're going, uh, or blue-green algae, and then they're bitching about fungus or candida problems. I have to laugh at all that because people are eating one, one family member of that thinking they're, you know, nutritional. Nutritional yeast. We used to sell that all the time. You know, brewer's yeast. Sell that all the time in the health food stores. I sold it in my health food stores years ago. But that, that, that neurotransmitter kick that kicks the heart to depolarize the uh, uh, ventricles and the atrials, to, to open up those valves, and that's that kick, that cardiac punch we call it, 
that is the systolic number, the upper top number. That's the adrenal glands. So the textbook number on the systolic number should always be 120. Anything higher than, let's say, 130, something's kicking that up a little bit. Stress, uh, uh, lymph, uh, pressure, that sort of thing. Uh, when it's below 120, oh, I'm feeling, I'm feeling tired today. I don't feel like doing anything today. Or I've got, oh, I'm so tired, I can't even raise my hand up. That's autonomic. That's the adrenal glands. And the lower the blood pressure and the young folks coming in today are in the 80s and 90s. This is serious. This is chronic. This is problematic. And remember, we've been talking a lot about when you go under anesthetics with these low blood pressures, some people are not coming out. A lot of babies are dying under surgery. You notice that? And it's like, God, medical doctors, wake up. What's going on here genetically? Quit chasing ridiculous gene thinking and look at genetics in a different way because genetics is a fact, but quit chasing these genes. I mean, this is, this is what messed up Angelo uh, Jolie or whatever her name is. You know, you, you, you get to scaring people because, and you're way out of line with that. You, 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 you're, you're having a good perspective with that. So it's enough to say that that top systolic blood pressure number is the adrenal glands. Well, what does the adrenal gland sit on top of? The diastolic. That's right. Your diastolic is directly related to your kidneys. So when your kidneys start to lose uh, their ability to filter, even themselves, you start to see simple things happen. You start to see the creatinine levels in your blood go up meaning the kidneys are starting to break down with all the acid retention. People have UTIs from that. And then all these interstitial inflammatory issues, which is just simply acidosis, just the lymph not moving anywhere. Because if you stagnate the lymph system, you're sitting, you're taking acids and they're just sitting there. And the cells are, are, are all in that goop. They're in the interstitial flood. So those acids are just sitting there chewing on that wall. And then cells have to eliminate waste into this sewage. If this sewage surrounds the cell, it's so intense, then when it becomes intracellular acidosis, that's when you start seeing the mutation or the atypicalness of a cell coming into play. It's that simple. Outside of that, the only way you can damage a cell is trauma. So you have to look at this lymphatic system and the role the kidneys play. They're the major players in the role of the lymphatic system in the elimination and the filtration of acids out of the body. And right before you get to them, you're hooked to lymph nodes. So lymph nodes, remember, clean. The bacterium breaks down these three pH acids and brings them to six so you don't break the kidneys down. Essential that these lymph nodes be in place. One of the biggest crimes I feel of the century is the removal of lymph nodes by medical doctors because they fight maybe, maybe, maybe find a cancer cell in them, which that's where they should be because where's all the macrophages in the body? Where's most of them? In the lymph nodes. You don't put macrophages around the cells interstitially because as you weaken, you could have a, a little frenzy feeding. You've got them in the lymph nodes. So you have to understand how that all works. So when the kidneys start to back up, you start to see your diastolic creeping up. Anything above 70 to me is a creeping. 120 over 60, textbook blood pressure. I don't care who's there. And if you're a practitioner and you're, you're detoxing all your clients and you get them healthy, you'll find 120 over 60 consistently or thereabout. 120, 119 to 130, 60 to 70, you're in a good range. Doesn't mean you're filtering though. You got to remember that. Blood pressure is not indicative of filtration. However, when filtration backs up, after several years of this, the kidneys start to go themselves. And that is when you see all this, the creatine creeping up and uh, you start to see the, um, uh, uh, the inflammation of the kidneys and the blood pressure going up. 
So high blood pressure as well as low blood pressure, kidney and adrenals. Now if you get too low of a diastolic, you're in the low 50s, you've got very weak kidneys. And this is where the weakness will come in to the cells. you got to build those kidneys up. And because man chose the high protein route, we have serious kidney problems. I mean, there isn't a child born today that doesn't have a kidney weakness worldwide. Bottom line, even islanders. It's just gotten that bad. Uh, the islanders, of course, are going to be the healthier kidneys. But, uh, you know, these high-protein diets, bye-bye bowels, bye-bye kidneys. And that's just what's going on. The genetics and kidneys and adrenals, you all are looking at this. And you guys that are really helping people are seeing this everywhere you look. Everywhere we introduce this to, practitioners are going, oh, my God, I'm seeing this everywhere. I remember Margie in Ireland. She said, my God, I'm seeing this everywhere. Naturopath in Ireland. So these are some of the things that you see there. Now I want to show you another high blood pressure because as the body gets acidic, it gets edemic. It holds fluids and that can also raise the blood pressure. 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 However, there's another thing called swinging blood pressure. And medical doctors that are listening to this, please, you have to understand this one. When the lymph backs up, obviously it backs up systemically. And it particularly backs right up the back. Almost every one of you knows what it's like to have stiff shoulders, tight necks, things like that. That's the lymph system. That means you're not filtering well. You're under stress or you're not filtering. Both, both reasons. And so one can lead to the other even. So real important to understand that when that builds up in the cerebellum, that's the parasympathetic side into the central nervous system. You'll see swinging blood pressure. When you're stressed and tight, your blood pressure will go up. When you're relaxed at home, it goes down. You cannot treat this high blood pressure except for PRN when needed. Because if you don't, you dump your clients in hypotension. You're not paying attention to your clients. And you have to determine whether this is swinging blood pressure. And no way when you're in a medical doctor's office should you take the first blood pressure as evidence of high blood pressure. That's ridiculous. Most people don't like medical doctors. As nice as some of them are, uh, you guys hurt a lot of people. And there's a, there's a subconscious uh, uh, issue about that that is sickening. So when you get a swinging blood pressure, you can't treat that with high blood pressure medications. You can take a high blood pressure pill maybe when you're high. The best thing is to run hot and cold water or real ice water right back here, that's alkaline, and start cooling that down. Work on the neural lymphatic points down the spine and you'll start to bring that blood pressure down. And that's good. Go and fix the kidneys because it's still back to the kidneys and adrenals that that problem exists. Because that's what builds that lymph going up the back and everywhere else. So it's always going to come back to those kidneys and adrenal glands. So always in a high blood pressure. High blood pressure is the easiest thing on this planet. And I don't want to use the word cure because high blood pressure isn't a disease. And this, the fact that medical doctors or, or, the, or the FDA would lump these kind of things as diseases shows you the intent to monopolize health care. So understand that when the body is simple, you got two sides of chemistry and you have two major fluids that encompass or surround all cells. So the problems are either in the body with the fluids, with the two sides of chemistry, or with the cells. That's it. So you think all this out, review these videos, and I'm going to do these short videos on all these different things. And we'll try to get out of this ridiculous concept of diseases and understand what are you doing when you have high blood pressure. When you have high blood pressure, you get off all your proteins immediately. You go on fruits, berries, and melons. Maybe a salad at the end of the day. And it doesn't take long and that blood pressure comes right down. Get some kidney formulas. Get some adrenal gland formulas. And get those restored. Check your urine. Remember, fill the boot or fill the cup. Remember that sediment. Fill the cup, get your kidneys filtering, and you will give yourself a lot longer life on the planet if indeed that's what you want.